He has pitched very well to start off. He'll have faced Joe Jimenez and deliver a strike to start off the inning. Karsten Vasquez and Andrew Shablowski, the two up batters, 8, 9, and 1 here against the Express here tonight. Hank Davis comes home again. A little bit low that time. 1 and 1 now the count. 5 nothing Express lead here in the 6th. Davis came into the inning on 53 pitches through 5. Pretty efficient so far as that one's just a little low. Now 2 and 1. Boy, that speed gun was going so well for a while. I wonder if somebody hit the power switch on it as we haven't got a reading here the last uh, couple of pitches. Guessing somebody flipped the power off. Here's a 2-1. Fastball in just inside. And the count now three balls and a strike to Jimenez, who had a base hit up the middle. It's the only hit for the Porter Cats tonight in his last at bat. He takes high and away, so Davis losing a little bit of command on that at bat. And that is his third walk better winning percentage against do not exist any longer in the Northwoods Leagues. That's your hint. You can send me your answers at ecexpressradio at gmail.com. Swing and a miss on the 2-2. Davis strikes out Siemens and there's two away. Big strikeout here in the inning to try to prevent the Border Cats from getting on the scoreboard here in the sixth. That's his fifth strikeout now for Nate Davis tonight comparison with the three walks he's allowed and the two hits. Here's the three batter, Connor Allard, who struck out swinging. Swung right through the fastballs from Davis on his last at bat. Snap throw down to first. Gets away a little bit from Conley, but not far enough for anybody to advance. Everybody back safely. Count 1-0. I bet our old video uh, director, Joe Maybe, who I see sitting down in the front row, would know the answer to that question. But I don't see his earpiece in listening, so it's a 1-0 from Davis, swing and a miss. Uh, Connor Allard has not been able to figure out the fastball of Davis here tonight. Connor Davis, Connor Allard, excuse me, ready to dig back in. Nate Davis taking a deep breath before he toes the rubber, looks in toward his catcher, David Lamana. Likes to sign on the 1-1. Letter high set. Deep breath. Look to second. Another look towards second. And here he comes home on the 1-1. Fastball swung out and missed. 86 miles an hour. And again, Allard just unable to catch up to the heat from Davis. That was the case in the last at bat. And it's the case in two strikes here. He needs to throw another. I would I think fastball at the letters, maybe a little bit elevated. Should get the final out of the inning with runners at first and second. Here's the one-two from Davis. It is a fastball low and away. That was a bit of him missing his spot. He kind of taps himself on the chest there, says that was my bad as that one's fouled off. And the count remains one and two. So look for Davis to try to, again, elevate a fastball here. That was a mistake pitch. Even though it was on the outside part of the plate, one that Allard probably could have driven to the opposite field. One-two is a breaking ball. That one in the dirt. Now two and two. It's an interesting pitch there again as the fastball has been working for him against Allard. Mike Brasina, I tell you what, I call him out and he emails back with the answer. Alexandria and Brainerd are the correct answers. The Blue Anchors slash Beatles. And I'm gonna I'm gonna blank on Brainerd's name now. On their mascot. 2-2 here from Davis is fouled away. And we'll do it again. Now i got to look it up, or Mike's going to send it to me after I blank on it here. But, of course, I was not in the league when Brainerd was in the league. So I saw some piece on them. I don't know if it was at Fox Sports or what it was, but uh, talking about the raceway they have up there, big drag race strip. 2-2 from Davis is in, and left center field should be playable here for Sykes flowing in the air. Sykes has it, and that is the inning. So two men left on a hit. No run score. Nate Davis is having himself an outing. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth. The Woodman's home run inning coming up with the ex Carson Park over the Border Cats. It'll be Troy Bilesmith to lead things off. Mike Brasino, who we've been talking about, is actually tonight's uh, Woodman's home run inning contestant. So if the Express hit a home run here as Milesmith fouls off the first pitch he sees, Mike's going to be going home with a $100 gift card to Woodman. So good luck, Mike. We are pulling for you. And all you got to do is go to the kiosks at Woodman's to get signed up for that chance at a $100 gift card. Here's an off-speed pitch low from the lefty in Hecht. One and one the count. For your chance to win again, visit those kiosks. Woodman's has the largest grocery selection in the state. Best prices to Woodman's. Low prices every aisle, every day.
Hecht comes set, and from the stretch, the 1-1 is rocketed down the line, but foul left side. Dial Smith a little out ahead of that one as he'll hit that one off the batting cages out of play. One and two. Miles Smith, Myers, Botcher. We picked the right inning for you, Mike. Top of the lineup coming up. The chance to give you a $100 gift card to Woodman's. And now a roller over left side here. Couple hops, charging is Soriano. Throws to first base, and he's safe. Biles Smith beat it out. Good job by Biles Smith hustling down the line to get the infield single. <laughs> he's got that single here, and now here comes Spencer Myers. Myers, another great night. Two for two with couple of singles, an RBI, a run scored, a walk as well. Looks like Tim Ewald is uh, trotting down toward the bullpen. There's already a bunch of pitchers down there, not sure who will start warming up yet. No one really throwing yet. Nate Davis is on 75 pitches through six, so he's definitely going to come out for the seventh. The question is, how quickly will that seventh inning go, and will he have a shot of coming out in the eighth as well? Off-speed pitches there for a strike into Myers. Hitting from the right side here against uh, the lefty and Hecht. All lefties tonight. Three pitchers for the Border Cats have been on the mound tonight. And it's been a steady diet of left-handers. Smith dancing around at first. Fastball into Myers is chopped up the middle. Should be a double play. The shortstop in Grilly steps on the bag and he fires to first. Gets the out. And there's two away now quickly for Matt Botcher. 6-3 double play. And there's two down here in the sixth inning. Heck, this looked pretty good here for the Border Cats after E.J. DePiero and Peyton Burke struggled to find the zone and to get outs in their respective innings. Express have five runs on six hits. Border Cats have not scored yet on just two hits. Here's Matt Botcher. Off-speed pitch high, 1-0. If Botcher gets one in the hitting zone, he could be sending Mike Bursina home with that $100 gift card to Woodman's. Even though he's facing a lefty here, you like the idea of him squaring one up. As a 1-0 is hit hard on one hop over to first. Jordan Larson has it onto the bag, and that is the inning. So, sorry, Mike, no $100 gift card to Woodman's. We'll have another entrant tomorrow night. We're park and right out of the break here in the bottom of the seventh. Philip Sykes leading off the inning for Eau Claire. Swings and misses at the pass ball from Joey Hecht. 0-1 the count. 5-0 Eau Claire here, bottom of the seventh. Hecht comes home, and this one is slipped into the center field. Should be playable for Siemens. He didn't get all that one. Did Philip Sykes, and he is retired. There's one away here in the seventh inning. This is the Domino's winning inning at the Express score a run here in the inning. All you got to do is text the word Domino's to 96893 for your chance at free Domino's. We gave away two more pizzas last night. We're giving away pizzas like, like pizzas. I was going to say hotcakes, but it's probably another word for pizza. One down. Here he comes home. A breaking ball from Hecht. The outside corner to Dieter for a strike. Dieter 0 for 1 tonight, but he's walked twice. He scored once. A 5-0 express lead here in the bottom of the seventh. Fastball home, and that one is fouled away off the end of the bat from Dieter. Why Shea Graham's going to run a ball out there. Everybody seems to be okay, unless that one was fouled off of Jimenez at the plate. Well, as we said, we've kept our eye on the Northwoods League out-of-town scoreboard a lot tonight. Waterloo and Lacrosse are now tied at four in Lacrosse in the top of the sixth inning. And again, I think if you're an Express fan, what you're hoping for there is for Waterloo and Lacrosse to split that series. You wouldn't mind, I guess, if Waterloo swept it because you have more games against Waterloo than Lacrosse for the rest of the first se the first half of the season. I think the worst case scenario would be Lacrosse winning both those games just because the Express are only going to face the Loggers two more times here in the first half, whereas they're going to face Waterloo four more times and kind of control their own destiny a bit. As Dieter will foul away the one-two and remain there. Vincent Martinez in the on-deck circle for the Express. Nobody on one down here in the bottom of the seventh. As we mentioned, as we get a quick look, is that Ali the Osprey flying around up there? What year are we on for him now? Is this year 10? This has got to be like, we need an Ali the Osprey 10th anniversary patch after he built that, uh, or she, it might be she, for all I know, uh, built that nest up there on the left center uh, field light pole. Brandon Dieter on a 1-2 count here from Hecht. Here he comes, fastball low, and now it's two and two. 
So again, I think that's probably best case is the split for the Express. Not awful if Waterloo wins both because again, you, you've got Waterloo in front of you. The Express only one game back of the Bucks. And the loggers coming into tonight's play. And there's a changeup that Dieter swings through. He's down on strikes, two down. And here comes Vincent Martinez. So that's the big one that we're watching with the Express just a game back of those two teams. And again, they're going to be tied if they win tonight. They'll be tied with one of those two teams, whoever loses that game, for second place in the Great Plains East at the end of the night. If, again, they can hold on for the win tonight. Duluth trails three to nothing at home against Bismarck in the top of the seventh inning as you get a look at the standings there on our video broadcast tonight. Breaking ball into Martinez is low and in the dirt, 1-0. So still a lot to play for. 14 games left. It was going to be an off day in here as well. But it's pretty much two weeks, and we're going to know who the first half champ is as Martinez is going to chop this one up the middle. Charging it from short is Grilly. The throw to first base is high, but in time to get Martinez. And that's the inning. Express go quietly, one, two, three, in the seventh. We come back for the eighth with the Express up five to nothing. We'll see if Nate Davis comes back out for the Express for the eighth right after this on your home for Express Baseball. Welcome back in here to Carson Park. We're through seven, five to nothing. The Express with the lead over the Border Cats. And Nate Davis is going to come back out there to throw another inning here for Eau Claire. He's on 87 pitches. He's going to face the 8, 9, and 1 batters. Show him in as Carson Vasquez and Andrew Shablowski. Nate Davis has had himself a ball game, folks. Just a three-hitter that he's on and a shutout at the moment. As there is activity in both bullpens for both teams here. A lefty up again here for the Border Cats down the left field line. And a righty up. And I do believe, I don't know if it's still Noah Denoyer or not, as there's a fastball from Davis for a strike going one. I believe it might be a different man up in the pen for the Express. We'll try to get a look at him here in a second. Davis on the line, the 0-1. Here he comes. Fastball high and away, and it's now a ball and a strike. To the number eight hitter in Joe Jimenez. Kick and delivery from Davis low. Now 2-1. and one. He's up to 90. Now the rules in the Northwoods League, if you don't know them, are that Again, if you hit 100 pitches in an inning, you cannot come out for another inning. And once you hit 110, you can finish that batter, but you have to come out after that. It's a 2-1 here from Davis is high and away. 3-1. And, and with that pitch right there, I think the Express might be a little bit more uh, apt to try to get that man warm and ready to go down to the bullpen. Here comes a 3-1 from Davis. Popped up right side out of play and foul. 3-2. and two. I tell you what, when Davis has gotten behind and counts and he's needed a strike tonight, for the most part, he's found it. He's only walked three guys. And for the most part, has been very, very effective. Here's a 3-2, fouled away, late swing, watch out. Our Marshfield Clinic trainer down that line was just missed. I mean, Vic Cable did get out of the way. It is Noah DeNoyer. I don't know if it was Vic who getting out of the way that kind of let her get in the line of that ball, but I'm just going to put it out there. 3-2 is now chopped down the first baseline foul. Couple of hops, nice play by the first base coach for the Border Cats, Grant DeWitt. Oh, everybody's good over there. If Vic Cable needs to make a play, he'll make a play, you know that. All right, 3-2, staying alive here is Jimenez. Davis takes a deep breath, here's a 3-2, fastball home. Rounded up the middle, Botcher will backhand it. He'll throw to first base, not in time, he beat it out. Just a little bit too far up the middle there for Botcher to be able to make that play. He got to it, but an infield hit in the end. And that gets Jimenez on, and that might be it for Davis. They might have said, hey, if you have a perfect eighth, we'll let you stay in. But if you don't, we're going to Denoyer in the bullpen. And he is certainly getting hot out there on the mound in the bullpen. So again, this is likely going to be it for Davis. They might let him face one more batter if he gets a double play or a quick out here. Could stay in again. He's up now to 95 pitches on the outing. Here he comes, high at 85 miles an hour, 1-0. His fastball, the lefty, has been in the mid-80s. We've seen it hit, I think 86 is the highest we've seen that. Maybe 87, if I remember correctly. 
Here he sets and comes home. A grounder up the middle. This one should be two. Dieter has it on to Botcher for one. Relay to first in time. Another double played 6 4 3 variety. Back to back innings with double plays for the Express. They have turned three of them here tonight. And now two out. No. We'll take over for Thunder Bay. Brendan Sindrick is a freshman at Pepperdine out of Danville, California. Six foot four, 195. And another lefty, the fourth lefty the Express have seen here this evening. And he'll face the bottom of the lineup, David Lamana, Sam Conley, and Connor Laspina. Here for the Express, he's only appeared in one game so far, and he pitched a scoreless inning against the Bucks in a 4-0 win a couple of nights ago for the Border Cats. A base five batters, walked a batter. Once again, did not give up a run in that inning. So Sindrick is now in. Lamana, Conley, and Laspina to face him with the Express up 5 to nothing here in the eighth. No one Denoyer has sat down for the Express as this fastball misses high and away. And with Nate Davis being on 97 pitches, and again, we were told before the game, this is uh, his last start of the uh, season, at least for the time being, until uh, maybe later in the season if the Express need a pitcher, certainly, as he was on a temp contract. Fastball misses outside here to Lamont, and it's 2-0. That one came in and was clocked at 93 miles an hour from the lefty. 2-0. That uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Davis tries to come out there to complete this thing again on 97. So he would basically have 13 pitches to work with there thereabouts. Is that a hard liner in the left from Lamana? Right at Edmondson came in a couple steps, makes the one-handed grab right up by his cap, and there's one away. So we could see the Express get a complete game, and I do believe the last complete game. Nine inning complete game thrown by an express pitcher was two seasons ago. Luke Eldred was the man who did that, the son of Cal Eldred, the former Milwaukee Brewer, and of course brother of CJ Eldred, who pitched for the Express back in 2014. Luke, a Dallas Baptist product, as that fastball misses low and away to Sam Conley, who is 0 for 2 with a hit by a pitch tonight. Sun setting, an absolutely beautiful evening here tonight for baseball. I mean, it does not get much better than this here at Carson Park. 75 degrees at game time as that one is low. And uh, for those, of course, in Canada, uh, 24 degrees Celsius, if you were wondering. 2-0 is that one is on the outside corner for a strike, 2-1. and one. I do write it in my scorebook when we go up to Thunder Bay since we are given the temperature in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. So I got to get used to that for that trip up to Thunder Bay coming up here soon. 2-1 into Conley, misses high and away. Now 3-1 to the Express first baseman. Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Beautiful spot. Port Arthur Stadium, one of my favorite places to go in the Northwoods League. 3 1 coming to Conley, and that one's high and away, and he walks him. Express get a base runner here in the eighth, up 5 to nothing. And it's Conley at first. Laspina has a walk, a sack fly, and a pop up here on the ball game. I think I started mentioning it the other day. I think it was in Chad's others here we started talking about Thunder Bay. And it's always fun to, to take the Express up there because the park, Port Arthur Stadium, right next to the hockey rink. And at least, I, I don't know if I remember it last year as much, but I remember in the first few years I was in the league, when we go up there, as Laspina will check his swing and foul it off, 0-1-1. But uh, what they do is they take the snow from the Zamboni and they put it outside the rink. And when you drive up there and you get these kids from California, Arizona, you see that snow out there and you see, see, it just snowed here, man. I mean, you start to get into their head a little bit and they believe you. As that one is a wild pitch bouncing wildly away from Jimenez. From Sindrick, that's about as wild of a pitch as you're going to get. And down to second base goes Conley. And now the Express have a chance to add an extra insurance run here in the eighth. But it's always fun to uh, play around with the guys a little bit. You know, if they, don't, uh, if they don't know where they're at, which sometimes some guys don't, they go, where's Wisconsin? I don't really know my geography terribly well. You can try to, you know, mess with them a little bit and tell them that Lake Superior is actually the ocean to look for whales, that kind of thing. Doesn't always work. You, sometimes you, you catch one, you reel them in. Hook, line, and sinker. And Sindrick sets belt high. Here's the 1-1. Tula Spina. Now he's going to actually check back. 
toward Conley and nobody covering. But you are allowed to do that. Denoyer is throwing right now. I got to imagine he is coming in for the Express since he is now throwing here in between innings. Here comes the 1 1. Fastball missing inside the Laspina. And it's two balls in a strike. Well, this gorgeous night, the sun setting here, the lights taking hold at Carson Park. The 2-1 and off-speed pitch high. Now 3-1 and one here to the express right fielder at the top of the lineup, ready to come back up and score a few more runs. Express came in with 131 runs scored on the season. That's fourth out of the 22 teams in the Northwoods League. The 3-1 is high and away to Lispina, and he walks him. So two walks now, and the express have base runners at first and second. And here comes Troy Bilesmith. We see Sindrick coming in and struggling a bit. Joey Heck pitched a heck of a ball game. Pardon the pun. Only 45 pitches through four innings. Gave up three hits, no runs, no walks, and a strikeout. Just 14 men face. So a nice job for Bilesmith tonight. He is one for three. He's hit by a pitch tonight. Has an infield single. As Billy Barker, who's coaching first for the Express tonight. Will come and collect a ball that got away from Noah DeNoyer and the bullpen crew down that right field line. First pitch into Bilesmith is inside, 1-0. Mentioned that uh, Royal Credit Union out on the Toppers Pavilion tonight. Chippewa Valley IT professionals out on the Kingpin Management Best Seats. Grace Home Respiratory out of the Shock Top Saloon tonight as Bilesmith is going to bloop this one and caught by the second baseman. Vasquez behind the second base bag. No chance to double anybody off on the play. And there's two away. Two gone. Here comes Spencer Myers, who's had a two for three night with a run scored and an RBI. NBI Inc. was out of the 10th inning terrace tonight. And Northwestern Bank out of the Bud Belkin. So... And again, hello to all those groups that made their way out to Carson Park tonight. Hopefully they had a good time tonight. They're hoping that the Express are able to hold on to this win tonight. They're up five to nothing. It's not done yet. As Myers is going to line this one into right field. Coming on Shablowski, and he will make the catch letter high on the run. And that is the inning. So the Express try to lock up the ball game and win this thing. Heading to the ninth, up five to nothing after this. And you're home for Express Baseball. Sort of thing. Uh, yeah, um, early on, 